Hi, you're right. Uh, we're back. And we are again in the realm of probability. In the previous lesson, we were looking at tables to represent probability situations. And today we are going to look at tree diagrams to represent situations. As a fun way of starting off, I thought we could do exactly the same scenario that we did in the last lesson in a table, except in a tree diagram. So, you know, we can follow on the, um, the horror that we were inflicting by flipping coins and rolling dice and seeing what outcomes came about and the percentage, well, the, we didn't do percentages, did we? We just did them as the fraction chances of any outcome, but you should know how to change them to percentages. You just multiply them by 100 and it turns into a percentage. You should know that. So back to what I'm talking about. Let's do a tree diagram of flipping a coin and rolling a dice. Now these trees, they're kind of on their side. They're kind of more like what happens if you um, knock a tree over than a nice, living, happy tree. But, you know, let's leave that technicality aside for now. We are going to flip a coin first. When you flip a coin, there are two possibilities, heads or tails. Cool? So you notice there, first part of my diagram, that's the first event. So that there represents the first event. And then after I have flipped my coin, I'm then going to roll a dice. And the outcome's there. What can happen when you roll a dice? Anything, well, it's a normal dice. Nothing special about it. It's not one of those, um, those really um, nerdy ones. I'm for nerdy things, but um, this is just a standard dice. Um, it has six outcomes, right? You can roll anything from one to six. So the second event... comes off like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's the same for tails. Whether you roll heads or tails, you can still get one, two, three, four, five, six. And thus, this area here represents the second event. Each time we do one of these things that can have multiple outcomes, it's an event, right? If I wanted to do a third event off there, um, what's the other one? A third event, like picking a pen, where I could pick a red or a black pen, each one of these outcomes would then have red and black hanging off it, and you'd have a third event. So these trees grow in that direction. So yeah, very much, instead of going up like a conventional tree that you may um, have experienced in life, <coughs> these trees are going left to right. You could draw it going down though. You don't have to draw it going in this direction, but you very rarely see them going upwards though, but you could do that as well. Anyway, normally we see tree diagrams written like this because then what we can do on the side here is we can write outcomes. And we can list what each outcome means. And by an outcome, I mean follow the path from the start. If I follow this path through to this outcome here, what's happened? Well, I've flipped heads and I've got a one. So that outcome there is heads with rolling a one. And at each point, you follow the path back, right? It's all about the path. So this second one there follows the path of heads two. Then heads three, heads four, heads five, heads six, then down here we're now on the tails path, so tails one, tails two, tails three, tails four, tails five, and tails six. So in the previous lesson, I was talking a little bit about the sample space and how the, um, the table showed the sample space, it showed the 12 different outcomes, and in turn we could list them, we can list the sample space of the 12 outcomes, well, this is a tree diagram showing the same thing, right? That there is our friend, the sample space again. You can see all 12 outcomes that can happen when you flip a coin and roll a dice. From there, again, you can be asked any of the, the probability questions similar to what I said, did last time. I'm only going to do a couple of examples because we did do quite a few probability 
questions last time. So in this case, I could say, what's the probability of tails then a four? And you'd say, well, tails and a four, that's, that's only one path. So that's your number of event outcomes, the number of outcomes that are a tails and a four, there's only one out of a total of 12 outcomes. So the probability of tails and a four is one out of 12. I could then, I could go something like probability of heads then an odd number. That's a little bit different to one I did yesterday. So if we went along the heads path, how many of them then involve odd outcomes? That one, one's an odd number, three's an odd number, five's an odd number. Remember odd numbers, ones that aren't divisible by two to give whole numbers. So there are three outcomes that involve heads then an odd number. So that would be three outcomes out of 12. And I do expect you would notice you can simplify that. Both of those numbers are divisible by three. All right, it's one quarter. The probability of um, rolling a zero on your dice. How many outcomes there involve rolling a zero? None of them. So the probability of rolling a zero would simply be zero. And so on. We can do questions exactly the same as what we did yesterday. But instead of uh, doing too many more on exactly the same situation we did yesterday, I'm going to give you one of these weird word ones that the, the book likes to throw you so that you've just seen another, a completely different example um, of how this can all work. So sadly, I'm about to take this off. I hope you've got it down or know how to press the pause button in the meantime. So, I have decided to do a slightly bigger example than some of the ones in there and hope that the diagram can fit on the board. And that is we're going to go represent picking uh, two letters from the word yeet in a tree diagram. As you do. So the first event is picking a letter from yeet, and the second event is going to be picking a letter from yeet. But let's do this. So there's four letters there. One, two, three, four. And again here, that's your first event, and the second event's going to be over here, and it's going to look very similar because, again, there's four outcomes out of each. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And it's all Y, E, E, T. Y, E, E, T. Y, E, E, T. Y, E, E, T. So that's the basic tree diagram, but what was the thing we put on the edge there? So that we know what each, each of that, each line actually means there? We need to write out outcomes. So I'm going to write outcomes over here. The branch each time, Y, 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 E, Y, E, Y, Y, then it's E, Y, going along here, E, Y, E, 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 ET, extraterrestrial, EY, EE, EE, ET, TY, TE, TE, TT. How many outcomes have we got this time? If you wanted to look at mathematically, each, each one of the four had four. It's going to be four times four if you don't want to count them up manually. We're going to get 16 outcomes. And 
What I'd like to do here is um, ask a few obscure questions. Because there's the two E's in there, it, it creates a, an interesting situation. Um, so what we'll do is, I'm just going to think of random things to ask. What's the probability of an E than an E? So which outcomes involve getting an E and then another E? Essentially they're the ones that are reading E, E. I can see a total of four outcomes that involve picking out the letter E and then getting another E. So four out of 16, four outcomes out of a total of 16 outcomes. You should realize that can be simplified. You need to automatically simplify where the possibility is there. Both the top and bottom are divisible by four. So you'll end up with one quarter. And what's some other, uh, I don't know, probability of at least one E. So all the outcomes that involve an E anywhere in them. So if I went and put dots next to them, there's that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Most of them involve an E at some point. In fact, I think, yeah, there's only one, two, three, four outcomes that don't have an E in it somewhere. So we've got a total of 12 outcomes that involve an E somewhere, 12 out of 16. Biggest number that goes into both is again four. So we divide both of them by four. You'll end up with three quarters for that one. Um, yeah, I think that's the sort of questions you can get, guys. I could try and make them a little bit nastier if you wanted. Um, or I could just ask an easier one. What's the probability of getting Y, Y? Picking Y and then picking Y again. There's only one outcome for that. So that, for example, would just be 1 out of 16. I could say the probability of, of getting two letters, which is, well, every one of them. So for that, it'd be 16 out of 16, which is 1. You can see the possibilities here. In the text, it's got these sort of questions, though. Pick, pick a letter out of a word and then pick another letter out of a word and things like that. Um, with that, you can go forward and do as you wish. Uh, I am going to actually do a little bit of optional extension work. I'm going to do this in an extension context, purely optional. Um, so you can kill the video now and go about and enjoy your maths. But I'm going to quickly just do a small amount of optional extension here. It'll be yeet again. So... Uh... So I just better put a big extension sign up here so people don't realise this is mandatory. Now, if I was writing yeet in a sort of a year 9 mathematics or year 10 mathematics context, I wouldn't write the letter E twice. The, the diagram can actually be shown in an easier way. There's only really three options, right? Um, and that's Y, E and T. But what we add on is we put the probabilities on the branches. So that's what you do next year is we put probabilities on here. We don't just leave the branches as they are. What's the probability of picking a Y in yeet? It's one out of four, right? The probability of getting E is two out of four. Two of the letters are E. That's the same as a half. So we actually put the probabilities on the branches. So that's event one. And then for the second event, it's the same deal. Uh, you can only get a Y, an E, or a T. And the probabilities are the same because we're assuming you can still pick any letter. There's another scenario where you'd say, oh no, once we've pulled out the letter, you can't pick it again. And that's something else for another time as well. But at the moment, we assume you can still pick any letter from that on the second event. 
And again, you put the probabilities are going to be the same then. One quarter, one half, one quarter. One quarter, one half, one quarter. One quarter, one half, one quarter. All right, so that's event two. And what we do is not only do we list the outcomes on the side here, but we can actually list the probability. So each of the outcomes, uh, we've got YY, YE, YT, we're just following the paths as we had done in the past. EY, EE, ET, TY, TE, TT. But the beautiful thing about having those probabilities along the branch is you can actually calculate the probability of each of those outcomes occurring over here by multiplying the probabilities on the branch. So for example, this YY branch here, to work out the probability of YY, I can multiply the probabilities on the branch, which were one quarter and one quarter. So one quarter times one quarter, if you remember your fraction multiplication, is one over 16, right? Because you just multiply the top, multiply the bottom. And I can do the same for each outcome. YE here, the next one, YE, is going to be one quarter times one half. So one quarter times one half is one eighth. So my probability of getting YE is one eighth. Y, YT here is another one quarter by one quarter, so it's going to be one sixteenth. EY is another one half by one, one quarter, so it'll be one eighth. One half times one half there, I'm going to get one quarter. One half times one quarter, it'll be one eighth on this path. One quarter times one quarter here will give me one sixteenth. One quarter times one half will give me one eighth. And one quarter times one quarter, one sixteenth for the probability of getting TT. So you can get a lot more technical and a lot more interesting in terms of how you present this stuff. Um, from there, if you are asked probability questions, you're going to have to be good with fractions to merge them together. So some of them are easy. Right? Probability of YY, you've already calculated it now, haven't you? Y, uh, prob no, I'll make that probability of EE. The probability of getting EE is simply here, one quarter. But you're going to have things get a bit harder if you say the probability of at least one Y, because there's a number of outcomes that have a Y in it. So each outcome that has a Y in it, you'd have to add together. One sixteenth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth. And if you're not, you can, you can put that in the calculator. I'm going to show you how to not do it in the calculator since, you know, this is an extension activity. So I get them all, 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 16th, 1 8th, 1 16th. Yep, they're all the outcomes that have a Y in it. You need, the, you need to change it to have a common denominator before I can merge all that together. The lowest common multiple of 8 and 16 is just 16. So I'm going to change everything to be over 16 uh, before I put them together. So 1 18th, 1 8th is 2 sixteenths, multiply top and bottom by 2, plus 1 sixteenth, plus 2 sixteenths, plus 1 sixteenth, and that gives us 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of 16. So the probability of picking at least one Y will be 7 out of 16. On that, that, that's an example of one that would have been easier on the previous diagram, because we could have just read off, oh, that diet, that on that on that one, and you would have got your number of options. And I have to think about that. Would that have worked? You would have got four there. Hmm. Have I done everything right there? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. See, back on the original diagram, you would have had four of them along that path on the top, but then you would have had an EY path here, but then he would have had a second EY path for the second, the second e, e letter, and then he would have had the TY. So he would have four outcomes, then 
one, 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 and it would have given you seven outcomes in the previous diagram. So you would have still got the same answer. That's the beauty of mathematics, guys. As long as you follow the rules, you will get the same answer every single way you do it. So anyway, that's a little bit of extension content. So that's the next step up from this lesson is you put probabilities on the branches, then you multiply the probabilities together to get the probability of any particular outcome. A lot more flexible and you can use it in a lot more situations. Anyway, for the uh, one or two of you who are still with me, cheers. Bye.